Hello everyone, welcome to your favorite channel, Impact Sudhakar. Keep watching. I am Dr. J. Sudhakar, Assistant Professor of Botany. I hope you enjoyed my an introduction to part 1, which contains very interesting topics of uh, structure of the flower and also about the carpel, apocarpus kinesium, syncarpus kinesium and also sexuality, bisexual flowers, unisexual flowers, all these things we covered in the part 1. Now in this part 2, I would like to explain about the structural symmetry, morosity and position of the gynesium and the thalamus. So don't miss it, you watch until the end. If any of you did not see the first part of my video lecture, I have already provided a link in the subscription. With the help of that, you can watch your one. Up to now, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. So now we will go to our lesson. I would like to ask one question to you. Just tell me, what is our national flower? Lotus. Okay, thank you. I explain to you the entire the concept of uh, structural symmetry with the help of the one flower that is lotus flower look this lotus flower this lotus flower we if you want to get two equal halves for the, this lotus flower we can get by cutting in any angle towards the center if you cut this angle or this angle or this angle any angle if you cut if you are getting two equal halves that flower is called as Actinomorphic flower that symmetry radial symmetry. So best example is lotus. This is also another lotus flower and Datura this is also best example for radial symmetry and Hibiscus all these flowers are best example for the radial symmetry. So next one now you see this is a very small flower Clitoria alternata. If you want to cut two equal halves so we can cut in only one direction that is called in vertical direction. So in vertical direction only we can cut two equal halves. So such flowers we call as zygomorphic flowers. It means these type of flowers we can cut in only one angle for getting two equal halves. These are flowers are zygomorphic flowers. Best example is Papilnaceae family. Peasu, Beansu, Valeria, Tephrosia. All these flowers are best example for the zygomorphic flowers now look this flower called canna indica especially this canna indica mostly grows along the ponds waste places all these uh, type of uh, places and if you want to get two eco loves from this canna indica flower we will not get it because of arrangement of the floral parts so we will not get any two eco loves on any angle that is called as asymmetric flowers all these three I explained in detail in this uh, chart. Look at this chart and you will get clear idea. To understand the concept of structural symmetry. Actinomorphic flower, we will get equal loss in any angle. Zygomorphic flower, we will get uh, equal loss in only one angle. And asymmetric flower, we will never get equal loss in any angle. So this is the three. I hope you understand all examples also. This is called structural symmetry. I would like to explain about the morosity of the flower. What is called morosity? Morosity means number of floral parts in each hole of the flower we call as a morosity. So look this flower. Mostly for the morosity we are taking considering number of petals and number of sepals. Sometimes number of stamens also, number of carpels also plays role in the morosity. Now I will explain you. Uh, look this uh, hibiscus flower number of sepals we count 1 2 3 4 5 sepals are there same way petals 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 5 petals are there if you see look the carpels also 5 will be there same way datura flower also number of uh, sepals you see 1 2 3 4 5 number of petals 1 2 3 4 5 so 5 petals 5 sepals at the same time inside five stamens will be there suppose if you take for example this is bahinia flower one two three four five five petals are there so likewise in each hole if the number of petals or sepals are five or multiples of five we call them as pentamerous flowers 
So next is Ixora. In this Ixora, if you observe a single flower, look this one single flower and count to number of petals. One, two, three, four petals are there. Number of stamens also four. Number of sepals also four. Like this, if the number of sepals, number of stamens are four, that type of flowers we call as tetramerous flowers. This is also another color of uh, Ixora. So all are what tetramerous flowers. Next to trimerous flowers. Trimerous flowers means in each hole there will be total number of floral parts three or multiples of three. Example onion, euphorbia are the best example for trimerous flowers. So now you got very clear idea about uh, structural symmetry and meracity. So these two, I given a text in two slides, just make a look and come back. We will explain you about the position of gynecium on the thalamus. Important concept now what uh, we are discussing in this the lesson is position of the gynecium on the thalamus. The based on the position of the gynecium on the thalamus, we have three types. One is uh, hypogynous flowers. Best example for hypogynous flowers are datura and hibiscus. You look at this is datura and hypogynous. Then perigynous flowers. The perigynous flowers best example is first one is crotalaria this is the crotalaria and this is tephrosia purpurea crotalaria and tephrosia purpurea are the best example for perigynous flowers then finally epigynous flowers epigynous flowers are the best example is tridax procumens hypogynous perigynous and epigynous in all these three i am explained in the slides very beautifully just look here I would like to explain the position of gynecium on the thalamus. There are three types. First one is hypogynous. So in this hypogynous condition, how it will be? We see the thalamus is convex or conical. See here, the thalamus is convex or conical shape. Then the gynecium is arranged at the apex of the thalamus. You look, this is the gynecium where it was arranged at the apex of the thalamus. Final floral parts like uh, this calyx and corolla and all are arranged at the base of the gynecium. You see here at the base of the gynecium the remaining floral parts are arranged. So in this flower the wavery is called superior wavery. This is wavery. We call it as a superior wavery. Example is hibiscus datura. So you have seen lot of time this hibiscus and datura. So the perigynous condition. How the perigynous condition looks like? In this perigynous condition, so he how it will be thalamus is concave or chaser shape. So here the thalamus is just like a concave shape or chaser shape thalamus is there. And then the gynecium is at the center of the thalamus. The thalamus is arranged at the center. Here you look, the gynecium position is at the center. Then floral parts like calyx, corolla, and andricium are arranged along the margins. Calyx, corolla, and andricium arranged along the margins of the thalamus. Then in this flower, the wavery is called off inferior or off superior. Look here. The wavery is off inferior or off superior. So best examples for this protlaria, tephrosia, plums, rose or pear. Then third one is epigynous. What is the epigynous condition? In this epigynous condition, thalamus is deep cup like structure. Look here, the thalamus is, entire thalamus is a deep cup like structure. And the gynecium is at inside the thalamus. You look the entire gynecium just inside the thalamus. And floral parts like calyx, corolla arranged above the level of the wavery. Here this is the wavery, 
about the boundary only calyx corolla and androecium is arranged in this flower boundary is inferior inferior boundary this type of boundary we call it as a inferior boundary so example tridax sunflower ray florets so cucumber guava three types one is uh, hypogynous second one is perigynous and third one is epigynous all these three are very very uh, important for the classification of flowers and for the classification of families and for the class bentham and hooker classification in lot of classifications it is very useful so i hope you understand the entire concept of this uh, position of gynecium on the thalamus okay friends this is about today our lecture we have uh, explained a good uh, things in the coming parts you i can cover about the perianth and estivation and the number of locules in the ovary and placentation etc all these things are very important concepts so don't miss it so always keep watching and this is about uh, our uh, uh, video lectures so if you are uh, not subscribed up to now please subscribe it and tell me your friends also thank you very much we will see in the coming videos thank you